What's up guys, today we've got the Wishmaker itself in ADVOU. Jirachi is ranked A- because even though it is a powerful, influential Pokemon in the tier, it has significant flaws that impede its consistency more so than the flaws of the Pokemon ranked above it. By this I mean that Swampert has an HP Grass weakness, but this stops it from doing its job both less and with less significance than Celebi and Jirachi's Dugtrio weakness stopping them from doing their job. However, this is not to say that Jirachi is not a consistent Pokemon, which it is. It's just a little more high maintenance. Anyway, Jirachi has those great 100 stats across the board. Uh, its bulk really shines with the lower average power level in advance. And it is a steel type, which the best defensive typing in the game resists so many important things, goes hand in hand with that great bulk. So, uh, Jirachi's main claim to fame is versatility, or it's one of them at least, and uh, we see this by its various sets, and even those sets have a million tweaks. It's almost Tyranitar-esque in that you can run just about every move you can think of with it, um, you know, decent move anyway, and it will probably be useful, as long as you know what you're doing. So, let's start off with Jirachi's most well-known set, Super Rachi. This is just an offensive Calm Mind set. Pretty simple to use, Calm Mind, and do a lot of damage. Uh, with Jirachi's great super effective coverage, it hits things really hard. Of course, it is stopped really badly by Blissey, uh, but we'll get to that. So, the main set is Psychic, Fire, Hidden Power, Grass. Uh, Psychic for Stab, Gengar, Heracross, Fire Punch for Celebi, Skarmory, Metagross, Other Jirachi, Magneton, HP Grass, Swampert, and Titar, and generally great neutral coverage. I mean, you'll hit things like Salamence and Zapdos with this plenty hard. So, uh, it's it's pretty great. It's really simple, honestly. Um, the way you really get Jirachi in is on things it scares, like uh, you use its resistances to get it in on things it scares out, like. Uh, for offensive teams, it's often an important part of their backbone because it has resist to flying in normal, which makes it nice against choice banders like Salamence and Aerodactyl. Resisting rock is also really, really nice. Uh, helps with Aerodactyl, of course, uh, Ments aiming for Zapdos, and even Tyranitar. Uh, steel resistance never hurts against Metagross, although you don't really want to switch into a band mash. You want to come in... Um, when it's locked in a mash, preferably after it's KO'd something. Like, you make it choose. Either it can EQ to hit Jirachi or mash to hit, uh, I don't know, the Zapdos switch or something. No difference between that and Rock Slide. Um, mash wouldn't be superior there because it hits Jirachi hard. So you, uh, you would try to take advantage of the mash locked gross that way. But you get the point. It resists so many things uh, physically. Um... Yeah, and then you uh, get it in there or, uh, with your speed against things like Zapdos and Offensive Celebi, and you just, uh, with the immunity to Sandstorm, which is just so crucial, as we'll continuously explore throughout this video, then uh, it makes it really hard to beat down, unless it's getting hit by really strong attacks. And luckily for Jirachi, it's not easy to be both fast, it's not easy to be faster, be able to hit Jirachi hard, and be able to switch in safely. Uh, so before we go into further depth, let's explore some other, other coverage options. Um, another classic is Ice Punch and Thunderbolt. You give up the Swamper KO. Uh, I mean, plus one Psychic still does a lot. But, you know, people like that cold Oko in case they want Jirachi to stay at high health, which is fair because even though it's an offensive sweeper, that natural bulk is just so useful. So uh, Ice Punch is great for Ments and Flygon. You still hit Celebi. Um, and Thunderbolt is great neutral coverage alongside it. Uh, hitting Skarmory harder, hitting Suicune and Milotic harder. Uh, Suicune's the bigger one, because Milotic you just kind of set up on anyway. But, um, T-Bolt is nice to really smack through Suicune. I mean, if Suicune's coming into Superachi, it's not gonna... Especially in Sand, you know, eating the Calm Mind at HP Grass. I mean, yeah, a Calm Mind set could, you know, roar it out, or Calm Mind and then roar, but then it's really weak and easy to be picked off, so uh, don't get the idea that HP Grass makes it really struggle against Suicune. 
I mean, if you try to switch in and beat it with it, then maybe you'll struggle a little, but uh, generally, if you get Jirachi out in front, like it's supposed to be, because it's an offensive Pokemon and does not shine as at really, you know, switching in and countering boosting stuff, then it's uh, fine. I mean, it's good at switching in against things like it threatens, like, let's say it's this Ice Punch variant and you switch into a Mixmen's HP Grass or Brick Break or Dragon Claw, that's three out of its four moves, by the way, and now it's got to run away. And you can grab the Calm Mind or you can switch out or you can... Uh, Go for secondary effects because Jirachi's uh, Deadly Serene Grace means that it has access to 20% freeze. So, uh, other coverage is, um, well, actually, that's pretty much all the coverage you'll run. It's mostly combinations of that coverage that you'll see. Uh, you can even drop um, Psychic if Gengar is not really concerned because Fire Punch still hits Heracross quite hard and the increased coverage is potentially game-changing, especially against other offensive teams, where Jirachi's speed means that uh, you can potentially blow through that Salamence uh, before it gets a chance to Dragon Dance up and sweep you, because if you're running an offensive team, chances are you're not the bulkiest thing around, so something like DD Ments is going to be really scary. So you can really play around the coverage. As for other items, some people like Lum, um, just because Gengar, Will-O-Wisp, and Hypnosis, and like Magneton T-Wave, which is pretty valid. And if you're really planning on pl planning on playing this at a breakneck pace, then you know, sure. But leftovers are generally preferable to be, you know, hard to wear down in sand. Uh, especially if um, if Blissey doesn't have Thunder Wave, then you know, provided it's not coming in at full health, then you can get really obnoxious against it because uh, Seismic Toss does that fixed damage, but you're healing it off in sand, unlike Celebi. And uh, maybe if you get a special drop or two, then you can do okay against it. Assuming you're running the Psychic set, of course. I realize that move is not on screen right now. But, um, yeah, that's... Uh, so it's not something to really bank on. Uh, since Jirachi often functions on uh, these kinds of special offense teams that really aim on beating Bliss above all else because it partners well with things like Suicune because uh, Jirachi can hand... Can, uh, with its resists... Uh, Jirachi's a great Suicune partner because while it's not going to handle the setup guys like the DD, Tar, Ments, um, and maybe even Gera stuff, I mean, Gera's a different story. And Suicune doesn't really check it either. But, uh, you know, Ments and Tar are the big ones. Um, then it's not going to really handle those, but with its resists, it can handle the choice band uh, attacks from that with smart playing, of course. And you do have other Pokemon uh, for backup against the one move they carry that hurts you. Uh, like Jirachi alongside flying types like Salamence and Zapdos is a very is classic ADV synergy for playing around those offensive threats. Anyway, the point is uh, Suicune can stay healthy uh, to handle those DD threats uh, because it doesn't have to handle the choice banded attack from the others since of course Tyranitar and Salamence do pair up often and well so um, its typing in bulk is just really nice and that's why Leftovers is another reason why Leftovers is really good. But yeah, Blissey, uh, you're going to want to bait that in, you know, use your Gengar and your Doug Trio and um, things of that nature. Right, Blissey is definitely public enemy number one, but if it's not T-Wave, then Jirachi is not as dead in the water against it as something like an offensive variant of Suicune or Celebi would be because of its sand immunity. Just incredibly useful. Of course, against more offensive teams, then Lum might be better because if you're just getting one or two hit KO'd by things, that regardless, then yeah, sure. Um, that might be a good idea, especially because being able to shrug off uh, an offensive Zapdos' T-Wave, which is trying to slow you down, uh, with Lum can be game-changing, as is getting a Calm Mind on Magneton, That, uh, especially because Magneton usually prides itself, or prides itself, uh, usually is good because um, even once it gets its KO, even though uh, something might be able to take a hit or two from it, its status is what prevents anything too crazy from happening. Uh, see DD Tar running Lum for a similar example. Again, Zapdos too, or even, you know, um, they being able to absorb a Gengar Will-O-Wisp one time on an offensive team that might not be able to afford a better switch can be huge. Uh, so... Or even um, shrugging off Will-O-Wisp when used defensively, um, you know, because the guy's just going to say, hey, I'm going to burn the Jirachi, and then I'm going to try to stall it out. I mean, that would still be a tall task unless you had already taken the, the attack and some spikes, but still. Uh, yeah, so I think now you see the, well, just the beginning of how crucial that sand immunity is. 
So yeah, that's Superachi. Uh, pretty simple. Pretty sure I'm not missing any coverage. I mean, the elemental plus psychic coverage is pretty, pretty much amazing, and that's uh, why Jirachi runs what it runs. Um, yep. So defensive. This is a big one. But the two uh, common variants are body slam, fire punch. Um, the purpose of this set is to um, is to hold off offensive Pokemon like Band, uh, Choice Banders, and Zapdos. It's pretty much the only Pokemon in the game that can really do that besides Steelix, which is obviously not as ideal because it requires Mag. And this Jirachi doesn't really care about Skarmory that much because if Skarm wants to come in, it's going to have to eat some Fire Punches. And um, Body Slam spreads Paralysis to further the cause against offense. And even defensive Pokemon don't like being paralyzed. Uh, you know, that potential 25% is potentially, you know, huge. So, uh, the EVs on this can be, you know, kind of finicky, but the whole point of Body Slam is also to survive and cripple Dugtrio so you actually beat it rather than just being fodder for it. Uh, so, the EVs are generally around you know, like, uh, this much defense, which tends to be good against other things. And then you might want to beef it out just to survive things like a plus one Ments and things of that nature. Um, some people like to put a little special attack in just to hit Skarm a little harder. I find it usually doesn't make a difference, so I wouldn't bother. And the special defense is crucial, so you're not constantly in fear of Zapdos' Thunderbolt or being able to better stomach Mixmence's Fire Blast. Uh, so, you know, pump the defenses. Um, and the other variant is Toxic, which is more self-explanatory. Now it can run speed. You can run 20 speed, so you can Toxic a, an Endeavor Swampert before it gets a sub up. Um, you can do similar things to try and outrun T-Tar, although I don't think it's as useful here, especially with how much they run. If, if it's Jolly, you pretty much assume it runs Lum, because it pretty much always does. It's going all in on the offense, not really using the longevity. Um, yeah, and uh, outrunning, uh, you know, other defensive Pokemon at this range, like Celebi and, uh, Zapdos isn't really useful, so generally... And, uh, remember, Drachi, I'm not saying it's starved for EVs, but... Waste not, want not. So, uh, you know, I would be careful of that. And those defensive benchmarks, you know, play with them in the calc. Uh, they're crucial. Anyway, so uh, this set can also be, if it's Toxic Fire Punch, you can also run Bold with it. It does insane things like easily stall out defensive Swamp or Earthquake. And, um, yeah, it's it's pretty dangerous. So, but um, Calm is the default because of how, excuse me, well it naturally handles Zapdos and mixed mints, which are some pretty desirable qualities. Uh, and it's still not, I mean, yeah, Doug Chio does trap it, but um, at least you'll cripple it, so you can do things like um, whirlwind it in, or phase it in repeatedly, and then even if you don't have spikes up, then it'll just keep taking poison damage, and, you know. So, uh, things like that. So... Uh, and Doug also doesn't really, I mean, yeah, it can, as long as it doesn't switch into Toxic, as long as it doesn't switch into a healthy Jirachi's Toxic, then it's okay. Anyway, uh, this Jirachi is so influential on the metagame that offensive teams really need to have a plan, or some, some sort of longevity, or a plan to really cripple it, or else it'll just easily, really, uh, <laughs> almost solo them, because it's like this and like a... DD counter, uh, so uh, of course it pairs really well with Swamper because Wish is of course incredible team support. I mean, I'm, you don't always wish to certain things like that share weaknesses, like uh, you're not going to always be able to pass to everything you'd like, but just throwing up a Wish, if you're going to be forced out immediately and then your next guy uh, gets healed off, it's amazing. Of course, the two turn heal does have its downsides, i.e. being able to heal in the face of phasing. Um, so, you know, if Skarm's whirlwinding around, uh, then you're not going to be able to wish and receive your own wish um, on the same turn, and that can be really crucial. Although, again, Jirachi's so sturdy because uh, even the mighty Blissey sometimes struggles with not being able to heal in sand, and Jirachi doesn't have any of that. So, um, yeah, and also uh, sometimes Zapdos, offensive Zapdos runs Thunder Wave, and uh, that two-turn... Uh, full para chance. You need uh, just one of two sometimes to not get your wish off, 
and that can be the game. Uh, Magneton often runs Thunder Wave these days for uh, defensive Jirachi crippling as well. So, uh, but yeah, this this set is very good. It's also a great stop to most uh, mix or uh, mix lacks. So it doesn't get a boom, or uh, it doesn't wear down your uh, Tyranitar, or Gengar, or Skarm, and uh, you keep it away from uh, your Skarm gets to keep away from Magneton, basically. Of course, if you've got Earth, if it's got Earthquake, then it's not uh, as ideal. But hey, you can still stay in because Jirachi's hard to kill, and um, then you've got your Gengar Tyranitar combo since it's not packing Focus Punch, so it's not as scary. It gives you options defensively to play around things. Of course, it can be a huge momentum sick against more defensive teams that run Refresh, uh, like Milotic and Swampert, which rose at, in response to this set statusing the heck out of everything, as well as, of course, Toxic Skarmory and things of that nature. But, yeah, uh, and Claydol, of course. But, yeah, the set is huge. Um, it's a crucial part of many, many defensive teams. Uh, it fits. It, it's great with spikes, obviously, because you know if you're defensively just throwing out the status and the weak fire punch, then you're going to um, you're not going to do all that much damage. So spikes definitely help it out. I mean, the quicker you wear down the opposing team, the better, because those offensive teams they hit hard. So the less windows you give them to break through your defenses, the better. So that is why this set is good. So that's uh, the defensive one fits well on uh, balanced or and defensive teams, preferably with spikes, as a way to generate offense for it while it's playing defense. So bulky call mind. Uh, this one's going right to max HP. Oh, uh, that reminds me, Superachi can run modest, which gives it a decent chance to kill Doug Trio um, with Ice Punch. I forgot to mention this um, somehow. Dugtrio is also a huge thorn in Jirachi's side because it can switch into attacks and then take out the bulkless Jirachi easily. Um, Modest Ice Punch kind of is counterintuitive because you want that Ice Punch to outrun Salamence and Flygon and Zapdos, or at least tie them. Um, but the power boost can be nice, and Modest Psychic hits very, very hard against targets like Suicune and uh, Snorlax and even Blissey if push comes to shove. Uh, or Swampert if you're going to drop HP Grass. So, uh, that's something else you can consider. Uh, I mean, Ice Punch still ties uh, Mix Ments and a lot of Band Ments, and you'll outrun bulky DD Ments. So, uh, in a one on one, that's not so bad uh, if you do choose to run Ice Punch. Uh, HP Grass also has decent odds. It's 5 BP lower, which does make a difference because with Doug's low bulk, every base power is crucial. Uh, so, yeah, something to keep in mind if you're not as concerned uh, at uh, really gaining every edge possible on those offensive teams. And also, uh, it's actually a big boost of Fire Punch because uh, a situation that arises quite often uh, when the opponent's Snorlax is blown up uh, by virtue of having to take on Suicune or Zapdos, then uh, Metagross is kind of... It's not the ideal default check, but with more and more Tyranitar leaning toward the mixed direction, as a rise of Will-O-Wisp Gengar and Toxic Skarm, and there being anti-DD measures everywhere, basically less earthquakes, then Metagross tends to be one of the few things that can really scare the Jirachi. And uh, if you, and sometimes it just hangs on to Fire Punch by a hair. So, and it's it's not easy to throw out Fire Punch when you're staring down Swampert uh, to wear the Metagross down. So it tends to infuriatingly stay at high health. Uh, and Modest can be the difference. I mean, I'm not saying Metagross isn't going to take any hits. Maybe you have your own Snorlax to push some damage onto it, or your own Tyranitar. But the extra kick from Fire Punch is definitely potentially uh, game-changing. And uh, as you can imagine, Spikes go well with the Super Rachi, although uh, Spikes teams generally don't have the easiest time fitting it because it's not as useful defensively, and those teams don't tend to put on enough immediate pressure to be able to play at the breakneck pace that uh, Jirachi ideally uh, plays at with this set. So, uh, anyway, back to bulky ones. Uh, yeah, so the two variants are, we'll start with Substitute, because it's amazing at avoiding Thunder Waves, and ha it has 101 HP subs for Seismic Toss, so it's great at messing with Blissey. 
and uh, it's great at dodging Leech Seed from Celebi. And generally, once it gets a couple of Calm Minds, it can be hard to break the sub with something like a Zapdos Thunderbolt. Uh, and generally, if you like sub on a switch, like to a sack, uh, but because their revenge killer, like Arrow, doesn't want to switch in, because it gets hit really hard, then you can potentially get two kills. Or, you know, uh, kill one thing, kill the sack, and then free damage on the next thing. So it has a plethora of options for how it could be played. And the two-move coverage uh, varies. Um, I mean, it can really be pretty much anything you set your mind to, but the classic coverage is Psychic Fire, which hits most things hard, and things like Tyranitar, that's what Doug Trio is for. Jirachi loves Doug Trio as much as it hates it. Uh, and uh, it Fire Punch's burn rate, 20%, nothing to sneeze at. If you can fire off a bunch of Fire Punches with a bulkier Jirachi, most players tend to like it because the results can be catastrophic. Like, if you burn a Banded T-Tar, I mean, it's still got a decent attack stat, but it's not nearly as scary and it's getting worn down, so. Classic coverage is either this, uh, Psychic still hits waters hard, and uh, the other coverage is Ice... It's the pseudo bolt beam and no that is not i mean it can be t-bolt but i did not mistype thunder uh with the bulkier pace this jirachi uh plays at then sometimes it prefers the extra power and the paralysis chance which can be huge in all sorts of situations so uh yes that's yeah, those are the two i mean this is a lot worse against swampert but uh, something to consider. Also, not that this is something you should bank on, because you shouldn't bank on Pokemon not using their standard sets just because a different set is currently trendy. Uh, but, you know, the rise of Mono Swampert with Surf, Toxic, Protect, and Refresh means that it's complete bait for this, obviously. But then again, it's also bait for other Kalman Jirachi in that sense. But you get the sub up in front of it safely is uh, what I'm getting at. Of course, don't count on Swampert never running Earthquake again just because Refresh is currently good. So, uh, yeah. That's worth considering. Uh, yeah, but Psychic Fire. And, and these coverage moves go well with, uh, oh, so EVs, it can be fast, especially with, um, with Ice Punch, just so it can get those subs up against the most offensive Pokemon. And sub also protects it from Dugtrio, of course. It can be bulky, uh, some speed benchmarks can be this for Moltres. Maybe uh, if you're not going the Ice Punch route, then you drop the uh, max... If you're not going the Ice Punch route, then you bulk out a little. Uh, you can go this for uh, Moltres, this for Mixments, um, and then you can go all the way down to here and start playing with the Natures to see what's more efficient with your remaining EVs for Adam and Heracross and Timid Suicune. And uh, bulk is always appreciated, especially since Jirachi is relied on defensively so much. So, uh, that's Sub, and then Wish. Uh, which runs the same uh, coverage moves, or the coverage combos, classically. Um, I mean, you can also do things like Fire Punch and HP Grass, but that's a little more out there. So, we'll, uh, we'll uh, keep it. That's for when you want to play the long game against T-Tar, but you also kind of want to hit it, and you also want to hit Swampert and Suicune harder. And so, um, I mean, having the stab is just nice, because... It hits Salamence hard, uh, it's just good coverage. The drop potential is potentially huge, but a Fire Punch HP Grass generally beats most things besides uh, Salamence and Flygon once it's accrued boosts. Oh, also good against uh, Snorlax, uh, which is a big target, especially for Calm Mind Wish, so uh, keep your targets in mind when you are deciding on your uh, coverage. Not just your targets, but how your team functions against them. Anyway, uh, so... So Wish, same thing, except this time it more traditionally runs Bold. I mean, the idea is pretty simple. You bulk out the the physical defense, and then Call Mine raises your special defense. Um, it's nice. It's really like the defensive set, except it can't protect, but it's it becomes a monstrous threat being able to heal and Call Mine, so defensive stuff doesn't have an easy time. I mean, it just dominates Blissey uh, without Thunder Wave, and that's still going to waste a ton of seismic tosses. Jirachi will still waste a lot of wishes, though. Wish only has 16 PP, so while Jirachi does seem impenetrable at times, remember, it has to wish a lot. And it often has to protect to receive those wishes. So, uh, yeah, it can burn through PP quite quickly, so 
I mean, this is an amazing set, but don't overestimate it. And uh, with this, at least, it's boosting, so it's going to eventually become more powerful. But yeah, the defense EVs, I and mean, this can also be whatever, you throw in your special attack for benchmarks against Skarm, I think 24 is, uh, makes it like 30% minimum, but don't quote me on that. Uh, special defense is nice for warding off Zapdos and Starmie, uh, Squeak Room a little. You can run that speed for Endeavor Pert. Um, maybe now if you're running that fire grass thing, it might be worth out running Jolly T-Tar so you can finish it off. Um, maybe getting a wish or a boost in front of a defensive Pokemon, or just finishing it off before it can do something annoying like Status U, or like Zapdos' Thunder Wave, or Rest, or even just do damage to put you in range of Dug Trio, like Zapdos' T-Bolt, even after a boost. Because um, you don't want to stay in on Zapdos forever, because it can T-Bolt, Crit, and Para, and be nasty, so you don't want to necessarily go to plus 6, usually you won't need it. And if you are getting the plus six it's usually like in a call my war against the now very rare call my blissey or against like a sleeping lax i guess but um yeah the defense is great for holding off even snorlax eq so and uh, with it being hard to trap uh you know i mean magneton kind of gets stalled out even with ice thunder and uh the dug trio can still live a plus one psychic without the because it's not invested so, and it's going to 2KO back, but uh, this that set, of course, goes great with spikes, and Ice Thunder can do the job against Doug, while uh, Magneton, even with Thunder Wave, it gets annoying, then it can still, um, still set up and boost, just not too much, and uh, yeah, maybe you run Psychic Ice as well for Doug, so best of both worlds, because uh, you still want to be hitting Snorlax hard, but yeah, you can throw in uh, your speed, benchmarks, whatever they may be. Uh, you can throw in your special defense, throw in your special attack. Some people are like, no nonsense, I want to just swallow pert EQ after pert EQ. I'm, you know, outrunning the Endeavor set, and then I'm just maxing it. But playing the Calc, it's really preference. So it's a bulky uh, set, it's, it's excellent. Um, mixed. Now this is a weird variant, because there is not really an accepted standard. But uh, the general premise is special attacks with physical stuff to throw off Blissey. And by physical stuff, I mean dynamic punch. And yeah, it's 50%, but uh, the potential hit against Blissey and Tyranitar is so game-changing that some people like to risk it. Plus, uh, some even run Body Slam for general paralysis spreading, always useful. And it makes it, not only uh, does missing a dynamic punch mean less because you can they can potentially full para but they can also um you can al you also confuse them on top of paralysis if you hit so it's even less likely that that t-tar gets that earthquake off of course it's still a roll of the dice not that not everyone's comfortable with but you get the picture so uh one set is this and we're just gonna pretty much at this point you just start tweaking you know uh because it really can be anything and i think this is the set that most exemplifies Jirachi's insane versatility because this is where I mean with the other sets it's mostly permutations you know various call mind options but here it can really do anything based on what you want it to um, I mean the fire grass is just nice because Skarm and Pert and then once Titar and Blissey want to get involved then you know body slam and deep punch and obviously uh, Dugtrio if it switches into body slam 60% of the time or a little more uh, because it can also crit KO, then 60% of the time, then it's just out of commission, gone. So uh, this is one possibility for it. Uh, Lum and Lefties are good. Uh, lefties for longevity, Lum for status, just like on Super Achis. I mean, some people have even used Bright Powder to really make it impossible to hit it. Um, you gotta be careful of those spikes. Those spikes wear you down a lot more even with the sand immunity, if you're not packing leftovers. Leftovers are the difference. Like, even if Jirachi gets worn at us, whirlwinded into spikes, and takes tw a full 25%, after lefties, it's still only um, down to 81%. So, I mean, you obviously don't want it to happen over and over again, but it's not getting worn down as fast as, say, a Suicune, or a Snorlax, or a Celebi, or a Blissey. So, uh, yeah, and you just run offensive EVs, you know, uh, you generally don't need attack for the D-Punch, which is nice, and nature is uh, usually mild, because you're not going to be able to live bulk, uh, Doug, anyway, you're not really tangoing with the physical stuff, and 
or uh, you can also run night or uh, hasty, of course. And you just want the all-out offense because you're really relying on coverage here with fire grass being so excellent. And now you start getting into the weirder stuff like uh, ice punch, obviously. And at this point, there is nothing right. You know, you can just run like full special attacking uh, with D punch. Uh, obviously, you can run thunder for para. Um, and coverage as opposed to body slam which is mainly just para and also you know dinking blissey enough in sand to where it's not like you did nothing uh even if you decide to not go for the deep punch um you can run psychic because you might notice gengar can get a little too comfortable against this once they figure your set out you uh might run just pure thunder wave you know i'm not risking my Paralysis on a 21% chance, which is what Thunder is after accuracy. Or no, it's 42, I'm sorry, because uh, it's a 60% para. So 42 with accuracy. But still, um, you know, so, and you can just make it whatever you want. I mean, this uh, Body Slam is nice because it paras Flygon on the Switch, which, uh, and Thunder Wave is pretty much better against everything else. Uh, like, uh, it paras Gengar as well. And it's guaranteed, but Body Slam does damage. And. Yeah, so you, this is really where it's up to you. But uh, the crux is dynamic punch, which is risky, but offensive teams do operate on a bit of risk because they have a lot of things going against them. Uh, it's really pivotal to um, just... I mean, it's not. don't risk the game on it unless you absolutely have to, which you should. But you just... Uh, you, it's not like you get one opportunity either. The thing, Drachi is threatening to so much that you are able to scare things out. Like, Skarmory doesn't want to take it. Per doesn't want to take it. I mean, even Gengar doesn't want to eat Fire Punches. That might be the boost your DD Vents needs. And, uh, because it can no longer live at that plus one. And, who knows? You got the, uh, you pair the Bliss, you D Punch, you miss. So what? You can try again later. Because Jirachi will get more opportunities. So, oh, uh, T Wave obviously also means that you cannot uh, hit Doug Trio on the Switch as well. Um, but yeah, you can just pretty much run this, and you can also go plus special attack to really make the um, Fire Punch and HP Grass sting, which is crucial because you're not Calm Minding, so you might want that. Uh, but yeah, this, this one is really, really up to you. Now, the final set. This one is kind of rare. But it's awesome, I promise. Uh, because Doom Desire is a terrific move that breaks defensive cores apart. Uh, first of all, it is typeless. Which means that even though it's a steel move, Skarmory, Metagross, Magneton, none of them resist it. Not even other Jirachi. Uh, it also means it doesn't get stabbed, but it's very powerful. So, yeah, the two turns of being used, the way it works is that you uh, Doom Desire up as something comes in, and whatever comes in, it uses that Pokemon's defense stat uh, when the attack lands. So, let me give you an example. Drachi uh, switches in on, let's say, Swampert, because uh, you're going to have to pretend like you have HP Grass with this. So, and you just, uh, and Pert's not going to protect, it's just going to go for, uh, it's just going to go right to Blissey, no sense giving a free Calm Mind. Uh, so... You Doom Desire, and then you switch to your physical attacker, so let's say Metagross or Snorlax. So now, whatever comes into Snorlax and eats its attack, then it has to eat the Banded Doom Desire based on Blissey's defense. So even if Gengar switches in and uh, blocks your Snorlax's Body Slam or Focus Punch or Earthquake, then it's going to eat a ton from Doom Desire. An absolute ton. Um... And yeah, it's it's a really great way to break apart cores and force lose lose scenarios. Like yeah, you can because it's basically like you're switching into two Pokemon at once. It's awesome. Uh, it is high maintenance because it's, it's very trap vulnerable and it's choiced and um, yeah, it, it can kind of suck, especially uh, once they figure out you're banded and they start switching physical things into you. Um, and uh, so like Skarmory comes in on Doom Desire and then you go to like Zapdos or something and then Zapdos T-Bolts and Blissey operating on Skarmory's defense is not going to take that much from a banned Doom Desire. But uh, that's why you use things like um, HP or Magneton for Skarm helps. 
Uh, we'll get into Magneton and Jirachi's potential pairing in a second when we get to the whole Doug Trio thing. Um, but yeah, it's that can be a problem. But you get rid of Ma uh, Skarm, you get rid of Mag, and the lore is really what makes it, that's game changing. Uh, I mean, still switching into two attacks at once is no mean feat. Like some people are like to run a uh, Ban Metagross alongside this because even if you switch, you know, then it gets kind of nutty. So um, yeah, and the other moves are mainly for decoration, but uh, they can also be useful. For example. Uh, Shadow Ball in a one-on-one, -on -one, still gonna smack Gengar. Uh, it's a good move to, you know, hit Celebi a bunch with, uh, if, you know, that annoying defensive call mindset is giving you trouble. Uh, Hidden Power Fighting is amazing because in a one-on-one -on -one against Titar, you just smack it. Goodbye. That's so, so great. Uh, as for EVs, just, you know, Max Max, Jolly or Adamant. I personally prefer Adamant. I think most people do as well because uh, Jolly's benefits were really having the HP fighting check to Titar. Excuse me, but with how fast DD Tar go now, it's usually not worth it. And uh, yeah, the power is really crucial uh, when using Doom Desire. You gotta use it to its maximum capacity. And you're not really doing much immediately to. I mean, getting off a dying Doom Desire against a Zapdos would be nice, but you're also running HP Fighting IV, so you can't even get to that max speed. So generally go with Adamant. And you know, then you hit your speed benchmarks. You, know, you can go down to here and get some nice natural bulk. It's not going to make a ton of difference, but uh, never underestimate some bulk. So let's just assume something like this. And then the last move, uh, Jirachi's kind of starved for physical options. So, I mean, some people like the body slam just because, you know, your para move, it's a good general thing to throw out. And it can, uh, and it's not the worst thing in the world with band. Uh, double edge, generally don't. Um, yeah. I mean, you can even, you don't even have to run an attack. You can run, like, um, I don't know, Sleep Talk in case you run into a Gengar, or a Hypnosis Gengar, or like a Venusaur or something. Or you can just run Wish. It's like, well, um, this gives my team some longevity, so it's nice. Alright, so, uh, and I mean, some insane people, no, you don't run Nightmare. Uh, some insane people run Dynamic Punch, but I think that's too much of a risk. I mean, if you want to run it as a fourth move for, you know, real emergencies, then sure. But I would generally go with uh, HP fighting plus something else. I mean, hell, use, a use Aerial Ace for Heracross. <laughs> so, can you imagine uh, you know, being a Heracross guy who's who got killed by Aerial Ace Banjirachi? Anyway. Um... Yeah, so now, a crucial element of Jirachi is uh, its relationship with Dugtrio. I mean, we know that Dugtrio uh, enables a lot of Jirachi, but the thing with Jirachi against Dugtrio is that it's very often part of offensive teams that have several of the best Pokemon in ADB offensively and defensively, and they also kind of stack Dugtrio weeks. Uh, that's why Ban Jirachi with Magneton is... Um, it's not the most advisable thing because then you're really, really getting Doug weak. So you got to have a plan for it. Like whether you throw on Porygon 2, but or let's take an example. Let's say you're running some special offense or a mixed Jirachi, you know, and you're running one of these offensive teams. So let's throw in Metagross because it likes to boom early and you like having that defensive typing to complement your water. You have the mix pert to break things apart and check things. That's what Swamp Pert does. You have your Salamence because its synergy with its Psychic Steels is just impeccable. You have T-Tar because of course you do. You need the sand and it's an offensive threat of a million different variations. And then you have, you know, Snorlax or um, Arrow or Zapdos or whatever. Uh, sometimes Jirachi handles uh, Snorlax's special attacking burden because it handles the special attackers decently. It's not really a hard counter, and it lacks the explosion, but you, know, you might want Zapdos to speed and Spike's immunity and ability to force in special walls and capitalizes off mix sets, breaking apart the special stuff. And This could even be Choice Man if you wanted, but it, like you see the point here that you really need a way to punish that Doug Trio taking out your Metagross if it hasn't already boomed, or your Jirachi or your T-Tar, or even if you're running an offensive pert, then your offensive pert. So that's um, a problem with a lot of Jirachi teams, and that's why... Uh, with the Call Mind sets, or, um, sorry, the Call Mind, uh, teams, the, 
that it finds itself on often, then you have things like, I mean, with your own Doug Trio, whoops, with your own Doug Trio, then you bait it in with Celebi, or you bait it in with Heracross, and with Celebi, it locks an HP bug, and with Heracross, uh, ignore these guys, uh, with Heracross, it locks an Aerial Ace, so then your own Doug, even if it loses the speed tie, it can live that hit and remove it with Earthquake, so that's a very common strategy alongside, uh, Jirachi. And then that also not only opens up Jirachi, but things like uh, Titar or, uh, I mean, a million different things. Metagross, obviously. Just them not having a Doug is generally nice. And then uh, these kinds of teams also tend to run uh, Offensive Suicune because its typing is complemented, the synergy we spoke of earlier. And now it's a sweeping threat if uh, Doug Trio is baited in. You can have your Gengar for your Offensive uh resistances and baiting in of Tyranitar for Doug Trio to trap for Jirachi or Blissey, Doug Trio to trap for everyone. I mean, this can be Celebi. Um, Celebi is also nice because it checks Zapdos, and remember, while Cel Jirachi is nice against those special attackers in a vacuum, it's also going to need some backup. And Tyranitar is nice against like Zapdos, you know, once or twice, but, you know, when Suicune just gives it those free Thunderbolts, you don't want to be switching to Doug Trio on those T-Bolts unless you really have to. Um, it's an increasing habit with Dugtrio having to switch into Zapdos' Thunderbolt, but avoid it if you can. So yeah, Celebi is generally preferred here, and uh, this is just a typical example of that. And the other thing was the offensive team, the mixed offensive team. And the defensive uh, set, um, you know, your wishing friend, I mean, that, that's just your typical Spikes team. Um, a very common one, I mean, let's just uh, go generic. A very common one is pretty much... I don't know why I replaced the Gengar there. But yeah, something like this. Um, you can also do things like Room of Dugtrio and throw in Zapdos. You can throw in Flygon. This was very popular for a while because of the um, the double spi or the quadruple spikes immunity. And both your, uh, both your grounded Pokemon are immune to Sandstorm. So other defensive teams are really not um, going to be able to wear you down that easily. Of course, uh, that's why Dragon Dance Ice Beam Tyranitar started popping up, because if Flygon's a soul check, then these are left quite vulnerable, because Skarmory's harmed to counter. I mean, sure, it can annoy DDTAR sometimes, but can't be relying on it too much, especially with how much of a beating it might take early game from Metagross. But yeah, this kind of team is very popular, and I mean, you just throw in Swampert here, and it's totally fine, because you're still sand-resistant, and there's Wish support going around, so... Uh, yeah... So that's pretty much the defensive stuff. And I mean, the defensive, the Wish Protect set, I mean, it could just as easily be Wish Calm Mind. Uh, of course, now you have to be more careful against other Zapdos because what, without the special defense investment and wishing and protecting, then you're not as sturdy against it. But it could easily be that. And I mean, you can throw, start throwing in Blissies here, you know, for the security. And then uh, Wish Calm Mind Jirachi is great because it gives you a defensive way to deal with things. Uh, a defensive Pokemon that can off go on the offense against things like Suicune and Snorlax, so... And it's not as trap vulnerable, which tends to be an issue for these kinds of teams. Um, yeah, and it's, it can just be, you know, anything. It can also go sub -call mine if you want. It, um, and, but sub -call mine also works well on those offensive teams. Um, so... Yeah, so that, that'll be the last example. I think that's uh, most of it. Uh, yeah, but generally, the offensive sets go with offensive teams, although they can fit. Like, this could also be a Super Rachi with this lineup. This could totally be Calm Mind's, uh, pick your coverage, you know, with the Max Max. Uh, it would do well here. Its speed is nice for things like Mix Men's, and it provides a sweeping threat against those offensive teams, so just gotta be more careful of the trappers, I guess. So, uh, yeah, that could be Super Rachi, but, you know, go Super Rachi or Sub Calm Mind on, you know, your, your Boom Gross, Swampert, or Suicune, uh, Tyranitar, Zapdos, uh, you know, Gengar could be here because it gives the special Boom Wall, uh, or Metagross, yeah, uh, or, oh, I already had that, I meant, uh, Snorlax. Or Salibi or whatever. Uh, something else to consider is that Boom will. Uh, the last thing we'll go over is that for the defensive variants, then 
uh, Will-O-Wisp Gengar. It's a great special counter, but it's not going to do well against Gengar. Now, while Gengar likes to run uh, Explosion to lure in Blissey and blow it up for special attackers, that trick doesn't work against Jirachi, of course. So, uh, will o -Wisps, it runs Will-O-Wisp uh, alongside Explosion, so you can't use Jirachi solely to circumvent that. Uh, that's why these defensive Jirachi teams often have, you know, the special defensive Zapdos to soak Will-O-Wisp without really, because the Will-O-Wisp and Gengar generally doesn't run that much special attack, especially uh, with how much bulk it has to run to avoid Pursuit Tar and live plus one men so it can provide the most amount of defensive utility for its team. Uh, so, you know, the Spidev Zapdos, uh, the Calm Zap will help out against that. And a lot of them also run Pursuit Tyranitar to really remove that Gengar so it, Jirachi doesn't have to deal with it because it shouldn't because burn Jirachi just crumbles in usefulness so yeah that, that's uh, something I wanted to mention so yeah I think uh, that should be it so thank you guys for watching I hope this video was informative for you um, I hope you enjoyed it and I will catch you next time